So I'm very glad to, to um, introduce Ong Bing Seng. Um, he was started to work with me on Poly and LVM three years ago, and yeah, did a lot of very good work in Poly. But like today, he's gonna present his own project, and yeah, I'm very glad to hear what he's gonna talk about. So hello everyone. So maybe Tobias already introduced my name. So I am a PhD student in Sun Yat-sen University side in China, and I just moved to the Luan Digital Science Center in Singapore at this October. And today I will talk about my research done in the SYSU. Then it is about a high-level synthesis. Then we can we will have some introduction later. So, so first of all, I will give some introduction about high-level synthesis, and then I will give an overview of the high-level synthesis flavor named the Sun high-level synthesis flavor, and I will introduce some some other detail of the high-level synthesis flow, and at last, I will give some experimental results, and also will introduce some future work will be done. And so, first of all, so some people may not not uh, an expert of the high-level synthesis or some hardware design, so, some people may ask, so what is high-level synthesis? So high-level synthesis is a process that generally how it is question for some reconfigurable hardware like FPGA or for application specific integrated circuit from the high-level language. The high-level language, well, maybe the C, C++, or Java or C sharp, and and the whole flow will looks like this, and start from the Hello World language, and do some transformation, and we can get the highly description of the oscillator, and in the transformation there is two key tasks will should be done. The first key task is scheduling and it assign the timing to the operation in the high level in the high level language. And this this step determine the speed of the oscillator. And then we also need to bound the operation to the physical functional units. And this step will, will determine the, the cost of the highway, which the size of the highway. And then, and then we can get an application specific highway isolator and comparing implement, implement the same task on general purpose processor, the hardware oscillator can deliver better speed performance and hopefully it can consume less energy and maybe there's other advantage I do not present in here. So, so some people may ask, so why we need to generate the heavy discretion, why we need to do the high-level synthesis? Well, the advantage of the, the oscillator may partially answer this question because the oscillator can, can deliver better performance, less, less power consumption. But, but in fact, the, in fact the, the oscillator can be designed with some hardware discretion language, but in construct, the high-level synthesis can automatically generate the highway description without 
and hardware expert, which means even a new buyer to hardware can, can use high-level synthesis to generate a good hardware isolator. And this, this is very important when we going to develop some product because the automatic transformation can reduce the, the development cycles. So here we have an example of the how high-level synthesis will be used. Now, maybe we, some of you may know that we have the reconfigurable device, then, for example, the FPGA. Now, some FPGA will have some processor called surround by the programmable logic. And then, this programmable, programmable logic can, can use to implement the hardware accelerator to isolate the, some part of the application. So suppose we have a software program. Then maybe we can do some profile to identify the compute intensive session. And then once we know the compute intensive session, we can employ a high level synthesis flow to automatically translate it to a accelerator description. And then with the implementation tool provided by the FPJ vendor, we can use the different reconfigurable logic to implement the accelerator. And then at the same time, the other no critical section of the program can still run on the processor. So this is one the example that uh, how high-level synthesis is used. And, and then so after we have an idea about what high-level synthesis is, then I will further introduce the, our high-level synthesis flavor. So first of all, the high-level synthesis flavor provide an automatically transformation process from the C to the highway description language. So it, in the framework, we have some very specific optimization targeting the FPJ device. So for example, we have the big level optimization. And with our microarchitectural support, we can also do the some global code motion to to pay the use the cost BB baseball parallelism to put the speed performance of the highway and the the mainly the, this organization are mainly implement in the target independent code generally later. So we, our high-level synthesis framework is also platform independent, which means it can use to generate highway description for both silence FPJ or autoless FPJ. And if you are interested, you can also get a source from the GRT hub. So this is an overview of overview of our framework. First of all, we, we, have, we di divide the synthesis process into three, three stages. Um, and, and we also have an, an cost level engine to provide the low level information to the high level representation that will be detailed later. And we have an embed and Lua scripting engine to, to generate the platform independent the generally the platform dependence construct like the timing constraint and the system bus is generated by the scripting language uh, scripting engine. So first of all, we have three stay in the synthesis flow and 
in each state, we have different IR. We are worked on different IR. And there are LVM IR machine code, and we also add an, a high-level physics specific IR named the RTL Netflix. So let's talk about the machine code. The, the machine code is for at this layer, we define a virtual target machine targeting the FPGA device. So, so we have a virtual instruction set for the reconfigurable device. And we, in the virtual instruction set, we have the, some special operation that only appear in the reconfigurable device. For example, the some decontamination operation and subword extraction, these two, two operations are CLO calls in the reconfigurable device. And we also have, we implement all Boolean, Boolean expressions with the lookup table or the true table. And all instructions are predicated. And the machine code is describe the behavior of the design, but we as the same with, which is the same with LVMI. But we we describe the behavior in more details. And then we have another lower level representation. That its name is the register transfer level netlist. Well, it is generated from the machine code after it is scheduled and it is a functional unit is bound to is bound. And it not only describes, not only represents the behavior of the design, but also directly describe the structural information of the design. So in, in this level, we have more information. So we can see that from the high level of a strat to low level of a strat, the more low level the IR is, the more detail is provided. And because the because the low-level representation has a lot of details, so it is hard to transform them without breaking the constraints from the high-level divide from the high-level. So the transformation will, will be really, will have less freedom to change the design at the low level. For example, we cannot reschedule the operations at this, lay at this layer. Or we also cannot unload the loops in lines in the machine code layer. So this is what the mean of the freedom is reduced at the low level. And we, as, we, as long as we have multiple representation, we also, we can need to make them work together, allow the, the different level of transformation to cross reference the, the information from others' layer. So, so this is supported by some, some this cross reference is supported by the LVM itself. Some some cost reference is supported by one of our component, component, component which will be detailed in later slides. And the cost reference example, one of the cost reference example is the dependence analyzed at the machine code layer. Well, this, this is provided by the LVM, we can do the machine code level ally, the dependent analyze, memory dependent analyze with the machine man operand. Well, this is 
very important when we uh, are scheduling, especially we are doing the modulo scheduling. This memory dependence may be very important. So we also, the, at the IR level and machine code level, we may also directly or indirectly reverse the the netlist to get the low level low level delay or cost estimation. So and we we also as we also annotate the timing information to the net from the scheduling results to the RTL netlist. Well, in fact, to the best of our knowledge, we we are the first open source high level synthesis favor which take the advantage of the scheduling result and generate the timing constraint script to achieve better result. So as we have, have so so many IRs and we also have different passes. And these passes, some are are general generalist transformation. Some are just for high-level synthesis, or is high-level synthesis specific? So the generalist transformation are implement, are implement with by LVM pass, and others are are do in the code generator. They are implement as an machine function pass, and so, the so someone may interesting interesting how we fit the high level synthesis flow into the target independent code generator, which is designed for software compilation originally. So, first of all, for the scheduling, we will test almost the same with the original LVM machine instruction scheduling, but we are doing the, but we schedule the operations before register allocation with our own scheduling engine. And after schedule, we can take the advantage of the LVM bundling to but those several operation which schedule to the same cycle cycles to the same cycle into a bottle. And, and with with the after bottling we can we can we can ask the LVM to do the live interval analyze because because the for the, because the resource in our framework is, is modeled by the physical register. So with an, an live interval for the analyze for the register for the resource, we can perform the resource bounding with the original LVM register bounding pass, but we do have our own bounding pass. But the, the LVM life interval simplify the bounding pass, uh, simplifies the bounding a lot because we do not need to calculate the life interval our, ourselves. And LVM also help us to eliminate the finals in the SSA machine code. So, so this is how we fit in the high level synthesis process into the code generator. And then we will talk about an, uh, an important component in our framework. The, the cost level engine can provide the low level information to the high level abstract for to the high level IR 
in an directly way or di indirectly. So its internal structure is low like, looks like this. It can start from the machine code, that is the HLSIR, and it can also start from the also start from the LVMR. The key the key to to get the low low level information is generally and close by close to final data path representation to which is the L the RDL netlist and with the low level organization like big level organization or even the lookup table mapping which is in the when the is in the downstream to in the logic synthesis to with this low level organization we can get an analysis that is close to the final form and provide the better low level details. So if we have the close to final analysis we can neither we can either estimate its cost or write back, write it back to machine code and do some delay estimation. So, so I will instruct one of the organization path that is called the early data path synthesis. The early data path, the early means we will do this synthesis before scheduling, so we can get better cost estimation or delay estimation by such kind of organization. So essentially, it, it, will, it builds a whole function deck and overnight the deck and write the deck back to the machine code. And we, so we, you can start from an example of the machine code like this. And suppose we have a machine code in which we have low instruction or strict instruction and some Boolean expressions and some add, addition. Then we can, we can build a, a whole function deck like this, the, there may be some operation cannot be handled by our organization, so it will treat, it will be be built as an unknown unknown node. So, for example, the the load instruction is cannot handled by our organization, so it will treat and will we will build a unknown node for it. Otherwise, we will build a corresponding node for each machine instruction. And we, you may find that we also uh, notate the big width information for each variable in the target flex. So, so we, in our machine code, we also have the the bit width information, the size in bit of each variable. And, and then the, we will do some optimization, big level optimization like this, and also some with the big mass information, we can also reduce the bit width of the addition. And then, we can, once we get an organized uh, and, op, uh, and DAG after organization, we can write back to get the, the more compared, more compared, more better IR. So we can do some organization like this. And then we can, as we end the, uh, Machine code can directly representation representate the the high level synthesis specific 
instruction, so we also we can directly write back to the machine instruction. And so we can also perform the so the kernel only software highlighting in our um, hello synthesis framework. So this is the software highlighting reviewing. Maybe some of us uh, already know what it is. And in our favor, we are doing the kernel only code generation for software highlighting by, by the load body folding. So first of all, we 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 fold the uh, each state into the same. We fold the uh, them together, and we pad the the instruction in different stage to the same to the same bundle. So to represent the facet that are uh, executed in tenant, and then we will. Also insert the file nodes to fix the register file interval. And we will also insert the predicate op operand to predicate each, each stage of the pipeline. So it will run like this, which will fill the pipeline by control. The filling process is con controlled by the predicate operation. And after the pipeline is exiting, we can also flush the pipeline like, like this. And, and at last, we have to do some experiments to compare our favor with the excise. The, this is a commercial high-level synthesis tool. And there's also another high-level synthesis tool named LayUp. So all these results are the, the smaller, the better. So the experiment is done on the C2 highway stone. And we can see that we can achieve better results than the, the other high-level synthesis framework. And yeah, then in the future, we, we may seek some, some inter-procedural analyze and organization. And we also try to work on an ontology genius Combine for, for LVM. And we may need to also implement some high level synthesis specific IR paths. For example, when we doing the inlining, we may do not want to duplicate the function body. Or that means we just just replace the core instruction by go tools, but do not copy the same the function body multiple times, even there is more than one core instruction to that function. So, so at last, I, I want to thank some people's which involved in, in this project. And also thanks to the LVM community to provide the compiler in, in the compiler favor to let us build our high level synthesis favor up on the LVM favor. And also the work is done in the Sun Yat-sen University and the future work will be done we will develop a new, new high-level synthesis te te no, new level, new high-level synthesis organizations in ADSC because they have a project that 
automatically convert the CUDA code to FPJ. So I will continue my hydro science physics research in ADSC. So that's all. And this is my first time to do a present, present, representation. So maybe it's, uh, it's not good. So thank you for, for giving this. So yes, that's all. Thanks. Yeah, let's, yeah, thanks for your presentation. And I think we have still a couple of minutes left for a question, so if anybody is interested asking some questions, like we have a microphone, please just stand up and give some comments. <laughs> so this physical work here. So is my understanding correct that uh, you will decide yourself that a certain function will map onto hardware which takes more than one cycle to execute? Or are these trade-offs somehow specified in, in the code itself? So, pardon? Pardon, sorry. So you, you have a function and you convert it to RTL? Yeah, yeah. So will it execute in one cycle to produce the result or will it issue multiple cycles? Multiple cycles. And how do you decide Yeah, at what places that you will have uh, the cycles. So you mean uh, there is many operations in the function. You mean how I decide which cycle the operation should execute in the RTL? Yeah. Uh, it, it, is, it is done by the Done in the, we have a scheduling, scheduler which do the scheduling, which determine at which cycle a specific operation will execute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the same happens for the loops that you also. Uh, we, uh, we have a modulo scheduling for the loops. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Oh, uh, I have two two questions. Okay. And uh, one, uh, uh, is there any uh, tutori uh, tutorials or an example uh, example of uh, so uh, so this and uh, emi uh, very low, um, very low uh, emissions. Any example of the world? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, may, uh, may, uh, can I find uh, any any uh, example uh, examples the, uh, in, uh, in the in the web? You mean the example of the world file generated by our? Sure. Uh, I don't have now, but I can send you when I can. Okay, and let let me not need. Let me, let me know later. Uh, two, uh, two. Uh, what, uh, what, is, uh, what, uh, what is the name Shant means? Well, is, is the, the pronunciation of a Chinese word. It means up. Up? Yeah. Oh. Ah. Makes sense. Thanks. So, um, okay, um, I have also a question. I was wondering, like, you, you, you kind of like use the LVM backend for some ent something entirely different. Like, how much I don't know. How much changes did you need to p apply to the LVM infrastructure? Like, do you have patches on the LVM infrastructure? How much is the difference? Well, we we have um, a patch to. The LVM infrastructure this provide in our provide in our code base. Okay, but you basically my understanding that you could reuse most of the software infrastructure for for high level synthesis is yeah. actually true. Yeah, just some 
but we we live in Piedmont, live in Piedmont uh, Square Dealer. Okay. And we also the register bonding pass also is done while live in Piedmont by ourselves. Okay. Because the process is somehow different from the traditional first physical register bonding in LVM. Okay. And another question I have is, um, I'm wondering, like I have the feeling it's very important like to reduce the bit size of operations um, to get performance. Does this only apply to, to like the actual data calculations or is it also important to have something like uh, loop, un loop, loop index variables or like array subscript expressions like, would it be faster if they, had, they, they use a smaller bit wise? You mean uh, reduce the uh, bit width? Yeah, maybe if you use instead of a 64-bit induction variable, maybe using a 3-bit induction variable or a 3-bit array subscript. Does it make well, a difference? This, this is not con in the, the induction variable in the loop is not considered yet. We just get the information from the, from this kind of big cancellation, big concat. Okay. And we know the higher part is zero, then we can, we can know. This is what sim is the that combine the LVMs that that combination also do the organization like this, but they are not in big level. They in the byte level. Okay. I see. Okay. Um, yeah. Do we have any other questions for Ongbi? Otherwise, I think we are done with this session. Uh, let's thanks again the speaker. speaker. <laughs> and